Hello and welcome to the presentation of our work, Multimodal Generative Learning on the MIMIC 6 r Database, here at MEDL 2021. I'm Henry Kluck, a master's student at ETH Zurich. So in this work, we applied a method for self-supervised multimodal and generative training that was proposed by Zuta et al. on medical data from the MIMIC 6 r Database. So the basic idea is to take a sample from this database, which contains multiple modalities, encode it into a one latent representation from which a decoder can then reconstruct these multiple modalities. This method is self-supervised because it doesn't need any labels. It is multimodal because here we work with three modalities, a text modality and two image modalities. And it is generative because one can sample from this latent representation in order to generate new samples. So what are the advantages? First of all, it doesn't need any labeled data, which is important in the medical domain especially, since there experts are needed to label the data. Also, one can extract features and generate from multiple modalities that exist in a medical domain, such as radiographs from multiple angles or different imaging technologies, text reports or electronic health reports. One can also generate coherent samples. And with coherent, we mean that if one conditions the generation with an image of a patient that has a certain pathology, then the generated samples will also describe this pathology. And last but not least, one can use this latent representation for classification, and that's because semantically closed samples will be grouped together in this learned latent representation. So we have seen that this multimodal aspect has many advantages. We're actually combining the learned distribution for each modality into one joint latent distribution is still an open problem. So we're still looking for this magic function here that merges the information of each unimodal latent distribution into one joint latent distribution, such that any subset of encoded modalities can be decoded into any modality. And here we use the mixture of products of experts variation autoencoder, which is the current state of the art, from Zotate R. It is a combination of the product of experts from Wu and Goodman and the mixture of experts from Shi et al. We apply this method on the MIMIC 6 r database, which was published by Johnson et al. in 2019 and consists of chest radiographs and text reports. Corresponding to radiographic studies performed at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston between 2011 and 2016. So you can see an example of this database with a frontal view radiograph, a lateral view radiograph, so a radiograph taken from the side, and the corresponding text report written by a radiologist and containing all its findings. Each sample in the database is also labeled with one or multiple uh, pathologies. But because these labels were highly unbalanced, we created a binary label finding such that if a sample presents any pathology, we set this finding label to true and otherwise we set it to false. And this results in 14,500 samples that are annotated with this finding label in the training set and 47,000 samples that are not. So it's still pretty unbalanced. We evaluate the quality of the latent representation by simply verifying if a linear classifier can separate between encoded samples with pathology and without. And here you can see the classification results of those linear classifiers, and we report the mean average precision over the test set for each subset, where the subset represents which modality was given as input to the model. So we can see that the more modalities we give to the model, the more information it has, and the better the quality of this latent representation, or the better the separability between the classes. We can see that overall the scores are pretty low, but they're still much higher than the random performance. Here you can see some conditionally generated samples with the lateral and text modalities as conditioner. So the two samples above the red line are given as input to the model, and the three samples below are generated. We can see that the model manages pretty well to reconstruct the text, but the generated images are pretty blurry. And if we add the frontal modality to the input, we can see that more details are shown in the generated images here on the right, but overall they're still pretty blurry and most of the details needed to classify for pathologies are lost in this blurriness. So in conclusion, we showed that this MOPO method provides promising results when applied to medical data for both classification and generation, and we provide a useful baseline to improve upon in future work. So future work could consist in finding better architectures for the decoder encoder parts, since here we used very basic ResNet architectures.
Also try instead of the art methods such as vector quantized variational autoencoders or deep hierarchical variational autoencoders could be very interesting and improve the results. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.